An Introduction to the Science of Hadith by Ibn Salah Shaharazuri, 577 to 643. Category 35 Misreading in the Isnads and the Texts of Hadith. Ma'rifat al Musahaf min Asanid al Hadith wa Mutuniha. This is a noble discipline which only the most skillful experts undertake. Darakutni is one of them, and he has a useful book on it. We heard Ahmed ibn Hanbal, God be pleased with him, say, Who is safe from error and misreading? An example of misreading in an isnad is the hadith of Shu'bah from Al-Awam ibn Murajim, from Abu Uthman al nahdi from Uthman ibn Affan, in which the Messenger of God, peace be upon him, said, Convey rights to those who deserve them, and so forth. Yahya bin Ma'in misread it and said, Ibn Muzahim, and he was refuted. It is really Ibn Murajim, or Murajim, the Arabic is not given, apologies. Another example is what we heard from Ahmed ibn Hanbal. He said, Muhammad ibn Ja'far, that is, Ghundar, informed us. He said, Shu'ba transmitted to us from Malik ibn Urfuta, from Abd Khair, from Aisha, the Messenger of God, peace be upon him forbade the gourd and skin smear, smeared with pitch. Ahmed said, Shubba misread it. Malik bin Urfuta is supposed to be Khalid bin Alqama. Indeed, uh, Zaida ibn Qudama and others have related it in accordance with what Ahmed said. We read from Darakutni that Ibn Jarira Tabari said, among the members of Banu Sulaim who related from the Messenger of God, peace be upon him, is Utba bin Budhar. Apologies, no Arabic. And he related a hadith of his. The name is supposed to be Ibn al Nudar. So not Budar, but Nudar. An example of misreading in a text is the hadith of Ibn Lahia, related from the letter of Musa ibn Uqba to him, with the letters Isnad from Zayd ibn Thabit, that the Messenger of God, peace be upon him, Ihtajama, uh, that's from the word Hijama, he was cupped in the mosque. Instead, it should read, Ih tajara. He made a tajar. He made an enclosure in the mosque with a shanty or a mat in which he prayed. Ibn Lahita misread it because he had taken it from a written source, that is, the letter of Musa bin Uqba, without audition. Muslim mentioned this in his Kitab al Tamiz. Other examples of misreading. We read from Darakutni regarding the hadith of Abu Sufyan in which Jabir ibn Abdullah al-Harami al-Ansari said, On the day of the parties, that is the battle of the trench, Ubay was wounded on the vein on the back of his hand, and the messenger of God, peace be upon him, cauterized it. But Rundar said in it, Abi, my father, rather than Ubay ibn Kaab. So Abi instead of Ubay. We also read from Darakutni regarding the hadith of Anas, Whoever says there is no God but God, and has in his heart as much as goodness of a dharra, an atom, uh, ways, will then leave hell. That Shu'ba said for it, dharra, kernel of corn. So not dharra, but dharra, uh, kernel of corn versus an atom. This pronunciation was ascribed to misreading. In addition, we read from Darakutni regarding the hadith of Abu Dharr. So you will help the uh, sani, sani, skillful person, that Hisham ibn Urwa pronounced it Da'i, Da'i, poor man. So, a skillful person versus a poor man. Uh, uh, th- uh, thani, it's Thani, it could be Thani, and Da'i, Da'i. Uh, apologies, no Arabic uh, words are given. It is a case of misreading. The correct form is what Zuhri related. Uh, thani, Thani, the opposite of clumsy. We read from Abu Zura al-Razi, from Yahya bin Salam. He is the Quran camp commentator. Transmitted regarding the passage from the Quran, I will show you the abode of wrongdoers from Sa'id ibn Abi Uruba that Kataba said, that is Misr, meaning Misr is the abode of wrongdoers. Abu Zura was shocked and disgusted by this. He said that in the commentary of Sa'id from Qatada, it is Masirahum, their fate, not Misr, it's not Egypt, it's their fate. We read from Darakudni that Abu Musa Muhammad ibn Muthanna al-Anazi transmitted the hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him. On the day of resurrection, none of you will come with a none of you will come with a lowing cow, and he said in it or a sheep, which ta, uh, grunts. It is supposed to be uh, tayaru bleats.
So the verb for grunting and bleating. We also read from Darakutni that Anzai said to them one day, We are a people who possess nobility. We belong to the tribe of Anaza. The Prophet, peace be upon him, prayed towards us, having in mind that was related regarding the Prophet, peace be upon him, praying towards an Anaza. So a thing or a tribe or a place or a spear. He mistakenly believed that he prayed towards the tribe. The Anaza here is a spear which is stuck in the earth in front of him and he prayed towards it. More humorous than this is that which we find from Abu Abdullah al-Hakim regarding a Bedouin who claimed that when the Prophet peace be upon him prayed, a sheep, that is an Anza, was set in front of him. That is, the Bedouin misread Anaza spear by not pronouncing the letter Noon with a vowel. We also read from Darakutni that Abu Bakr al-Suli dictated in the congregational mosque the hadith of Abu Ayyub, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan and follows it with Sith from the month of Sha'wal and said Shay some so instead of saying six he said some in addition we read from him the authority we read from the authority abu bakr al-ismaili according to what they read about him he used to say in the hadith of aisha from the prophet regarding the soothsayers that pouring out qarra of a zujaja glass bottle and it should be the cackling of a dajaja so uh, problems with uh, verbs and apologies because no arabic is given it's just transliteration which further complicates this uh, this portion we also read in regard to the hadith related by Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan, the Messenger of God, peace be upon him, cursed those who carefully enunciate their sermons. Yushakkikuna al al khutab in the manner of poetry. That Darakudni said on one occasion, Waqi ibn al Jarrah pronounced khutab al hatab, that is, making the phrase mean those who split firewood. Abu Nu'aym al Fadl ibn Dukayn was present and he repeated it to Waqi with khutab. Khutab or khutab. I read in the handwriting of one of the authors that the mosque of Mansur in Baghdad, Ibn Shaheen, said regarding that the Prophet prohibited the splitting of firewood. And one wit said, folks, what will we do when this is necessary? Instances of misreading fall into two subcategories. The first of them is misreading in the text and the second is in the isnad. Alternatively, they fall into two other subcategories. One is visual misreading, tashif al-basar, like the hadith cited above from Ibn Lahia. And this one is more common. And the second is aural uh, misreading, tashif as sam, as was the case of hadith of Asim al Ahwal. One person related it saying from Wasil al Ahdab, Darakutni said that this is a case of oral, aural, uh, ear, and not visual misreading. It seems that he maintained, and God knows best, that aural misreading refers to words which are not written similarly. Rather, the sense of hearing of the person who related it caused a mistake. By a third subdivision, misreading falls into the subcategories of misreading of the wording, and it is the more common and misreading pertaining to the sense, not the wording, as was the case with the hadith cited above from Muhammad ibn al Muthanna on the praying towards al Anza. Anaza. Calling some of what we mentioned misreading is figurative, God knows best. For much of the misreading transmitted from the greatest of the splendid scholars, there are excuses which those transmitting the misreading did not pass on. We ask God for success and protection, and God knows best. Stay tuned for many more parts.